All right, so we have a 1986 TLR200 carburetor. Uh, this is a bike that was in pretty decent shape um, for the year, but the carburetor needs a little bit of a cleaning. Here is the bowl. You can see that there. Uh, it's not in bad shape. What you want to check for on these older carburetors is if there's any holes in this uh, float system here. Um, since they solder these together, you can see that on the carb uh, piece there. You want to check this needle valve to make sure there's no damage to the tip on the bottom. You want to check and see if there's any wear on the sides of this as well, um, which this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't see a ton of wear. Uh, this pin has a little bit of wear on it, you can see, um, but it uh, it was okay. It, it came right out. Um, typically, you know, when I work on a carburetor, I have one of these tools here. This works great for um, popping that pin out uh, and you know getting access to the rest of the bowl. So there is the carburetor, and this applies for any carburetor if you're cleaning one, no matter the brand. Uh, you want to make sure you have uh, you know a screwdriver that you can use to pop this pilot jet out, and that's the jet here that's by itself. If you don't have the right screwdriver, uh, find the right one so that you don't to strip it out. So have another one here that will probably work a little better, and it does. So make sure you can get all the way down into the well of it. Okay, give that a few spins. You can usually take it out by hand at this point. Um, so this is the needle jet. Uh, it is clogged up a little bit, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean that out. Usually I spray a little bit of carb cleaner on there. Any brand is fine. Uh, I usually use a soft bristle brush uh, nothing metal because this is brass and I don't want to damage it. Um, so give it a blow through, check the hole on it. This one is a little bit clogged. Um, these side passages uh, are a little clogged as well. Um, so we'll get those cleaned out here. Usually what I do is I have a glass container uh, that is on the table. Let me grab it one moment. If you have an old uh, glass container like this, you can spray a little contact cleaner in there, uh, or rather, uh, carb cleaner. Then I just let that soak, um, and that will eat all of the uh, junk out of there. I also do a little spray in here, clean out this section, take your brush. Uh, like I said, soft bristle, nothing, uh, nothing metal. Um, give that a dunk. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the main jet now. Typically the main jet is in two pieces. You can see here that uh, there is a top part to the jet. Um, if that's too hard to turn and you're worried you're gonna strip it out, go ahead and grab yourself a adjustable metric wrench. And uh, go ahead and get a firm grip on that and give it a turn, very good. Should be able to turn it out by hand after that. Uh, no problem. So, that's your main jet. There is a little bit of corrosion on it, but it looks pretty decent. So again, soft bristle brush. Um, give those holes a cleaning. Blow them out. Compressed air works really great. Um, I always like to use compressed air on uh, jets when I'm working on them. I, th I think it, it does an excellent job of uh, cleaning out all the holes. So actually I'll definitely be using compressed air on the pilot jet. <clears throat> um, okay, so that's pretty good. Usually I just take a look inside the carburetor. If there's any dirt inside, um, you know, you can uh, spray that out with a little bit of the carb cleaner. Um, just wipe your hand in there a little bit, give it a wipe, spray it again. Um, this one's in pretty good shape. It's very clean, um, so that's that's good news. What I usually do as well, um, all right, I'll be doing this off camera, is I'll run upstairs, grab the uh, compressor, and I blow out all the vents uh, where all the uh, gas comes in and goes out, uh, just to make sure that everything is uh, nice and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will be right back. 
Okay guys, we're back. Um, I'm going to show you exactly what I blew out here. So you have your passage where gas comes through, uh, and then the float will stop it as it rises. You have your main jet, and then you have your pilot jet that's right here. Uh, you blow all three of those passages out with either compressed air or an air compressor with one of the uh, nozzles for blowing air out. Uh, this jet is nice and clean now, so I'm sure you probably can't see it, but uh, there's uh, air coming through there very good now. It's nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and just take a quick look at this and give a few more little cleanings here on the edge, get any more of that corrosion off it. Um, at this point, we're ready to reassemble. Everything's very clean. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this out of the way. Like I said, any kind of uh, carb cleaner will work uh, for this method. I usually put the idle jet back in first. It doesn't really matter what the order is as long as you get them together. Make sure it's tight, but not too tight. Seat it very lightly. You'll take your main jet next. Place that in here. Uh, now this carburetor in particular doesn't have a splash guard uh, the, the XR200s typically do, uh, and there is little ridges along this edge, and, and it lines up, so it's very easy to tell uh, where they go back together. And I'll, I'll put in a video specifically for the 200 carburetor uh, at some point, I'm sure. But this is a TLR200, uh, which is more of a rock climbing trials bike. Um, so you want to make sure you get that nice and tight on the brass. Give that a turn so it's t very tight. Take a look at everything else. All the passages look good to me. Uh, there's no leaks on this float as it appears. Uh, the float's very easy to put back together. You'll take this little needle jet. You'll slide it up over that edge. It's going to kind of dangle on there. You'll set that right down into the piece. And then you want to make sure that that moves very freely in there. Otherwise, you're going to have a, an overflowing problem. You'll have gas leaking everywhere. So. Just make sure that that moves easily in there. Go ahead and slide your uh, little uh, metal piece here back through very carefully. And then you want to make sure that when you lift it up, everything moves very good and that, that looks great. So if you go ahead and just give that a lift, you can see it's moving without any problems. On this particular carburetor, there is no uh, bolts that hold it together on the bottom where the uh, bowl goes. Um, so that's actually a first for me. I've never had to work on one of these uh, in this particular fashion. So go ahead and slide that back down over where that went. It's going to press firmly down into the bottom. And then you're going to have to slide. I apologize. I have this on the wrong side. You'll have to slide this bad boy over this way, I do believe. There we go. <clears throat> you have to slide this uh, over the top. And there's actually a spot. Uh, where it kind of locks into place, give it a press. You can see there it's uh, beveled, so it goes up and then it just snaps right into place, holds the carburetor on there. It's actually great because most carburetors you work on, the bolts are stripped out. So um, really nice to have something where you don't have to deal with that because uh, that is something you will see if you're working on a used bike uh, is the bolts on carburetors are always stripped out. Uh, and if you can't get them off, usually you end up having to saw them and make something that looks like this. Uh, this has obviously not been sawed, but um, you know you can you can saw a bolt to uh, to get it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here. This is the drain plug. Um, really great thing to use uh, when you're putting your bike away for the winter time. If you never want to have to work on a carburetor, make sure you drain the gas out of your car before the end of the year. It takes two seconds and it'll save you a lot of hassle. Uh, you almost never have to clean a carburetor that's drained after every season. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, you know, when you get into uh, the winter months. All right, this <clears throat> in particular, uh, this gasket is not going back in here, this rubber o-ring, how I like. So the, the race on this is really small where it kind of lays in there. So I guess it's okay if it gets smoshed a bit. So just don't over tighten something if you see that. Take your time with it. Um, you can always unscrew something uh, if you haven't gone too far with it. So just make sure it's pretty tight on there. I'm not going to go overboard on it. Um, that's got a nice seal on it. And then that's it. So that's a, that's a basic carburetor cleaning. They're all pretty much the same. Um, this is, a, like I said, a Honda TLR 200 carburetor. Um, it's already, it was running uh, when I took it apart, but I just wanted to make sure that everything was uh, kosher on it. So um, that's pretty much it. 
uh, as a rule of thumb, if you don't have to mess with the uh, gas and air ratios on a carb and it runs uh, and you don't know what you're doing, uh, just leave it as is. Uh, if you do know what you're doing and, and your, your understanding of the how carburetors work and um, the air pressure in which you ride, uh, the, the elevation, then sure, go ahead. But uh, if you're a novice and, and it's running, uh, it's best to just leave it as is if, if, um, or take it to somebody who does know uh, if you think there's some kind of an issue with your carb uh, not you know, running at your expectation. So, all right, guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate your time, and we'll be back for the next one.